Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to use all the tools um, designed by Nancy McCabe for Spellbinders uh, to create this sort of really grungy tool set. So I just wanted to show you that there's another way that you can do these tools. So off we go. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Here's the finished card, and the tools are a little bit shinier, and I'll show you in the end why they are and why I decided not to make them shiny. Um, and so I have a few supplies that we're gonna be using here. This is a, um, this is Art Alchemy Wax, and it's in brushed iron. I got this on Amazon, and I'll link it below. And I'll be using my Crypt Grit Paste and my Vintage Photo Distress Ink. I'm going to be using uh, Distre Distress Ink and Black Soot and Oxide, and Archival Ink and Ground Espresso. And then I've got a little Distress Ink over there and Gathered Twigs. And I have the two Lost Shadows um, Distress Sprays, and I've also got a Frayed Burlap Distress Spray. So I'm going, you know, with Really Rustic. And here are the sentiments, and I'm going to be using Cut Above the Rest. Um, for my sentiment and here are the tools and I've got them all laid out here um, on this little magnetic sheet. I've got a couple of sheets of accent opaque 120 pound paper and I've got a sheet of watercolor paper. So we're going to start off with our background with the watercolor paper and we're just going to be doing some ink smooshing on the smooth side. So I'm going to start out with black soot oxide or um, ink and your general ink smooshing, like you've seen me do a million times before, and I'll be doing multiple layers. So I'll let you kind of watch that while I talk about how excited I am for Nancy. I mean, seriously, come on, girl. <laughs> I hope Spellbinders picks her for a lot more designs and projects because, you know, this is something completely different. It's not flowers. It's not mailboxes. It's tools, man. It's tools. And we like tools. I love tools. I have my own set of tools. I have to hide them from Mike. Sometimes he'll steal them from me and I won't know where they are. So anyway, I'm just doing layer upon layer here of the black soot and then I'll move on to another color. Um, the best way to get a good, good depth of color and even though it's a black color, it's still multiple kind of, um, I don't know, multiple layers of black that you make it dark and light and give it that kind of grungy old feeling. And so I just um, dry between layers. And I don't get it crispy dry, just dry, just plain old dry. And I'll go ahead and wipe this up here. And then I'm going to be spraying down, this is frayed burlap, and I'm gonna spray it directly onto my mat and then just tap in. And this is just to kind of give it a little bit more depth of color. But then we're gonna do something really surprising. <laughs> so um, I'll tell you the reason I love this Lost Shadow um, Oxide Spray is because it can just mute down colors. So I'm just going to saturate this thing and it's going to blend those colors, but also kind of mute them down. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. So here I was doing all that smooshing to make it all nice and bright. And then I turned around and muted it down, but I added a new depth of color to it. So that's the whole point of that. Then I'm going to get this fully dry and I'm going to go ahead and emboss it and do a couple more steps with that and we'll be done with our background. So you see how that lost shadow just does something, I don't know. I'm not too worried about the sides because I'm gonna be trimming them off. All right, so I have this embossing folder and I'm gonna go ahead and just wet the back of my paper a little bit and I'm gonna run it through the embossing folder three times because it's a 3D folder. All right, so we've got that all embossed and now it's got all these fun little bumps on it. You can do a lot with this one. You can make it fun, funky, or grungy. It's the sky's the limit there. So I'm just rubbing my black soot ink pad over the top of it 
just to hit the high points and then I'm going to trim it to four by five and a quarter which is the size I want it to be and then I'm just going to edge around the edges with the black soot distress ink And again, I apologize, this is a little bit of a long video, but there are a lot of steps here, so I didn't want to miss any. All right, so we're done with that. We'll go ahead and set that aside, and we'll go ahead and get to work on our tools. Now I want to wipe off my surface because I don't need to be getting black ink everywhere. Not only that, when you spray those distress sprays outside of a splat box, they tend to want to go everywhere. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull out my accent opaque paper and I'm going to lay out my tools on here so I can get as many as possible on these two. I, I pre-cut these. So as many as possible on these two five, uh, five and a half by four and a quarter sheets of paper. I probably won't be using the wrenches because I'm thinking more wood shot, but then there's a wrench. So... <laughs> A pipe wrench, so never mind, or a crescent wrench. Maybe we're going to do all of them. I don't know. I don't remember. Here's the thing. I made this video several days ago, and I just have not done the voiceover because I just haven't had the opportunity. So I'm doing it now with the opportunity, but not quite the memory. Any At any rate, I'm going to get all these tools cut out. So here they are. So I've got the saw, the ruler, the wrench, the screwdriver, the hammer. And this here is gathered twigs. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to smush the ink pad down onto all of my handles. So I want all my handles to have just a wooden, old wood appearance. And this is going to do it for me. And then I'll take my black soot ink and I'll edge around them and that'll give it that grime that you see on tools that have been hanging in a garage or in a shed for a hundred million years. And I've seen tools like this so much <laughs> in my lifetime between my husband and um, my grandfather didn't really keep tools. He was, he had, he had a horse. He wasn't much of a ranchman other than that. But I may have had a few uncles or stepdads or whatever your mom is calling them. <laughs> whatever flavor your mom is calling them of the month. Yeah, um, my mom was a single mom, so that's that. This is this teeny tiny piece that goes on the screwdriver. And yes, you can still edge those. I know a lot of you um, complain when I'm working with teeny tiny stuff about how you wouldn't be able to do it. But look, I can do it. I'm blind as a bat. So you can see that I have blackened my fingers quite well, and I'm perfectly okay with that because we're going to get even messier here in a minute. So everybody knows that kind of grunge is my style. So that's the first thing I had in mind when um, I got these from Nancy. I was going to buy them anyway, so imagine my surprise when I got them for... Um, for stamp wars. I was really excited. I still bought a set and I'm going to be giving it away, but um, I just think, I just love these tools. I think they're great. So all these I'm going to make metal. Now, a ruler, can it be metal? You know, I mean, not necessarily for a woodworking, but mine's going to be. Um, my husband has like T-squares or other types of rulers that are metal. So I'm going to keep this as metal. So I'm just laying down some of this wax onto my little pad and I'm just getting some on my finger and just rubbing it into the paper. It doesn't take a lot, but I'm making sure I get extra because there's a, you know, some dimension built into these little tools and I want to make sure I'm getting in all those little cracks and crevices. And I'm only coloring the parts that are going to be, you know, showing as, as a metal part because I'm going to have a wooden handle for my hammer, wooden handle for my screwdriver, so on. So getting these little teeny tiny pieces. So on the initial, um, my prototype, I had first done 
uh, foundry wax in the silver, um, but I found that it was too shiny for my taste. I needed them to be a little bit more dull because if they're shiny like that, it doesn't make sense to me that they'd be shiny and rusty. So uh, sometimes I do things because it makes sense, and sometimes I just do things because I feel like it. That's that's just the way the way the world here. <laughs> All right, I need just a teeny tiny bit more to get the rest of that crescent wrench. There we go. This wax stuff you can put on wood. You can put it on anything. But again, this is kind of an iron color. So there's my fingers and there's all that <laughs> wax everywhere. Look, if you if you don't want to get messy, you might not want to play at my house. <laughs> so I'm just using some hand sanitizer to kind of clean the excess off my hands. I'm not going to fully clean them right now because I'm busy. But I want to get any excess off so I don't get it everywhere else. And I'm just going to take my little tweezers and move all these teeny tiny pieces so that I can clean up the um, wax off of my surface here. And it also cleans up with hand sanitizer, no problem. You could probably clean it with just regular alcohol too, but there's my hand sanitizer right there, so I might as well use it. All right. There we go, happy with that. Just making sure I don't have too much excess on my hands here before I move on to the next step. So I'm gonna grab all my little pieces here and move them back within sight. Because I've still got to put these together and grunge them up. I think that saw is my favorite piece. So what I have here is I have my Vintage Photo Distress Reinker, and I'm just gonna take the lid off and just drop a drop or so onto my um, surface here. And I'm gonna take a paintbrush, and I'm just gonna paint this on here and there willy-nilly onto these tools. So it's not gonna stick real well because this is wax, right? But it will stain it. And that's what I'm looking for. See how it kind of beads up because it's wax, but the what's left behind will stain this. So just taking my brush and kind of just going along. And then I'll wipe, I'll wipe, you know, the excess off because it won't dry, you know, or it'll take forever to dry, and I don't have forever, doggone it. I have to go to work. <laughs> so I'm gonna take a couple more drops and drop them down onto my surface here. And then I'm gonna grab my grit paste. And I like to use the Crypt one because, hey, I bought this big bottle, number one, and number two, it dries darker. So I'm just gonna take maybe a teaspoon, maybe half a teaspoon full. And you can always make more and put it down right, plop it right on top of that vintage photo ink. And then I'm just going to mix them up like you're mixing paint colors. And this makes just a, a, an amazing rust. <laughs> so if you're looking for rust, you've got the grid of it plus the color. Because again, this does dry down a little bit darker uh, because of the uh, Crypt Grit Paste. I just bought another bottle, believe it or not, and I'm just gonna leave it closed and hopefully it doesn't dry up on me, but I, I tend to use this stuff quite a bit. So I'm just gonna pick up my pieces and I'm just gonna start spreading this on. Just kind of tapping. I don't want it, you know, even or anything like that. I just want it gritty and rusty and messy. Going along the edges, I know where that hole is, there would be more rust. I'm trying not to get any on the parts that I have to glue. So I'll just put it down and then set it aside and grab another piece. Now this ruler one, I wanna be careful with because you know I've got to glue these two pieces together and I want it, want it to be able to sit down on the edge. So I'm just gonna put a little bit on the top edge there spread out this uh, vintage photo that I had on there and then just grab a little bit and just put it on the right there. <laughs> and 
put it wherever. It's your tool. See, I think they're already starting to look like metal tools. Let me grab this other piece, and I'm just going to wipe, again, wipe off some of that um, vintage photo that was still beaded up on there. And, yep, I just kind of wiped it off with my thumbs. No big deal. And this one I want pretty grungy. So I'm getting, getting that stuff down in between those teeth. And then those two will glue together. Let's get our hammer. Every time I see a hammer or say hammer, I think of my kids back, I don't know, back in the 90s, maybe early 2000s. They used to watch a show and the girl would always say, oh, my hammers. And I think think I want to say it was either Hannah Montana or it was Lizzie McGuire if you know let me know in the comments I don't remember exactly but I it used to crack me up I don't know why things that make old people laugh <laughs> all right let's get our screwdriver boy I can't tell you how many screwdrivers I have like that laying around because you know um, Mike does a lot of work outside right and um, he'll just he'll leave his tools and forget about them and you know dog will drag it off or whatever and next thing you know I'm finding an old rusty screwdriver in the yard hopefully before our lawnmower finds it and notice I left some empty space there on that little um, second part to the crescent wrench because I need to glue <laughs> look at me I'm a hot mess and I don't care <laughs> oh, yay. Now I'm not going to put too much, you know, on the in on the sides of this. I want to make sure that I'm able to glue it down because it's an accent piece. So just make sure that I'm keeping it sort of towards the top. And then we'll get the rest of the wrench here. And there's a little tiny piece that glues on there in the center. Yeah, a little bit more. It will start to dry on you and that's okay. But I've got some excess, so I'm just gonna scrape it along my background here. Why not? That's maybe, you know, a rusty metal pegboard or something. I don't know, but I hate wasting my I hate wasting my stuff, <laughs> especially when I've used my ink on it. All right, I think we've got everything done there, rusty wise. Now it's time to put everything together. I'm just gonna wipe off any on the back of that, and then I'm just gonna grab my glue. I'm just using a liquid adhesive. And I'm going to glue these two down to each other. There's a little hole that you can match up for where they would hang. So I'm just going to match that up and glue them together. And there we've got our really rusty ruler. I think I'll add a little bit more rust to the edges there now. So it looks like it's one cohesive piece. And yep, I'm getting pretty messy here. <laughs> Pretty soon your hands start to get quite gritty. All right, let's get this little piece here that I lose multiple times during my adventures because it will flip out of the tweezers and so on. I just rubbed it right into that mess, and I'm going to go ahead and put together the crescent wrench. Um, first, I'll put together the screwdriver, I think. So this is the wood piece to the screwdriver. I'm just going to stick it down. Super easy to do. There's not a whole bunch of pieces. All right, let's stick this one down to the wrench. And this, again, is an accent piece like you would see in a tool. And you can look for where the engraving kind of is or the embossing to kind of find where that goes. Okay, and there's our top part and I'm just going to put some glue right here at the very bottom and I'm just going to set the wrench right on top of it and 
and then eventually I'm gonna glue that little that little piece on and this glue will dry clear so I'm not too concerned about it see here's me again looking for that little tiny piece because it's so small <laughs> I do find it eventually but moving right along we'll just keep keep going here until I come across it all right so as far as the hammer goes I need more color in there so right where the metal part is because the handle of the hammer has an empty space in it so I want that to be metal inside of there I'm just putting a little tiny bit of that um, gray silvery stuff and then I'll glue the wooden handle down need a little bit more There we go. Just where it's going to look like metal. And you see my grit paste isn't dry yet, but I just keep working even if it's not dry. I don't care. It'll dry. <laughs> It'll dry. And if I mess it up, it's rust. It doesn't matter. All right. Get this guy glued down. Believe it or not, even though that stuff is wax, the glue sticks to it, so I'm okay with that. Now, I really need to continue to add to that hammer as well. Here's my little piece that I lost. See, I knew I'd eventually see it. And I'm putting quite a bit of glue, and that's okay. It, it dries clear. There, that part's done. I wanted to get that out of my way. We'll go ahead and put together our saw. And I don't know why I keep putting <laughs> glue on the top. It only sticks down to the bottom, but I don't know, just a habit. And I'll glue the second piece to it. And this is an accent piece in my mind anyway. Now I'm doing this before I saw Nancy's video on how these are supposed to go together. Because when we got them, we just got the naked product without any pictures or anything. And here's a little piece that goes onto the screwdriver. I'll go ahead and pop that on, make sure it's going the right way. Boy, that's that's the messiest hands you'll probably ever see. <laughs> that's okay. All right, we've got our screwdriver done. Now I need these edges to be dark. I don't want them white because that doesn't work. So I'm going to go ahead and just take my, um, take my little sponge tool and just edge these up so that there's no white showing. And also to give them a little extra depth and dimension. There's my hammer. And I can see where I need more rust, so I'm just going to grab some of my rust and rub it in there. Which is why I didn't clean it up before I started on to the next step. Because I knew I was going to need more. I'm trying to get this to go inside of there. But it's starting to dry out on me. so And it will. Because that's what it should do. Alright. We'll just go ahead and edge our saw. And again I'm using the black soot. It looks like I'm using Distress uh yeah i'm using ink okay and just adding a little more rust now that i've got it all distressed out you know i need more rust near the handle but i'm not going to do that <laughs> that's okay go ahead and get my screwdriver now you could cut these out of black too that um that um, wax stuff will go over black as well and show up so you know if you want to save this step you could do that if you're ever going to do this or if you're just watching just to watch the disaster of my hands <laughs> all right almost done with our tools our grungy grungy tools 
and we'll be ready to start assembling this and doing the sentiment and so on. All right, little teeny tiny dirty, dirty filthy tools. I'm gonna to set these aside <laughs> and really dirty filthy hands and so I can clean up this mess here. All right, so I've cleaned my hands and I've cleaned my tools <laughs> and I've cleaned my surface and now I'm gonna do my sentiment. And I am going to uh, select a cut above the rest. And I'm just gonna do it on some white paper it's kind of heavy it's accent opaque and I'm just gonna hand stamp it I'm gonna stamp it with the um, ground espresso archival ink though um, I don't want it black I don't know why don't ask me why I, I just decided I didn't want it black I'm just gonna hand stamp it and then I went ahead and got some more ink on my hands and I don't know why I feel like I have to have it right side up to do it. I could stamp it upside down. I'm going to cut it out anyway, but eh, whatever. All right, so I've got my stamp stamped down there. I'm happy with it. Looks good. Lucky, lucky, lucky. And I couldn't tell you what I'm doing right now. I'm probably searching for my um, cutting tool. I don't See what happens if I don't do my voiceover right away. <laughs> oh my gosh. But I do want to cut this out. Um, but I don't want it to be white. So I'm going to use the um, Distress Spray in the uh, Law Shadow. And just give that a dry. Um, so, it, so it's not white. And it kind of blends in, but not too much, with the rest of the background. And I'll go ahead and dry this before I trim it clean off my spray there I love all the sentiments they're really awesome <laughs> this is my favorite one though because I just feel like it matches with something I would say to somebody all right now that it's dry I can trim it I'm just going to trim it really close. You see how I have it just sticking out a little bit outside of the guide there or the guard or whatever. And that kind of helps me get it where I want nice and close. Now I'll trim the edges off so that it's just one small piece. There we go. I've got a perfect cut. I don't know how that happened, but it did. I'm really happy about it. And then I'm going to go ahead and edge this with the black, of course. So that it looks like a, you know, a dirty sign. All right. So now we've got all our parts. All we need to do is assemble them. And this part, you know, is pretty elementary. So I'll go ahead and speed this part up. First of all, I'm going to pop my background up with some foam tape onto a black card base. And this isn't super thick foam tape. Some foam tape I got from Amazon, I think. If you get too much, just trim it off. Popping it up, though, especially when it's been embossed and, and colored and stuff, wet a lot, kind of keeps it on there nice and straight and sort of flat, helps it flatten down. So I'm standing up while I place this down and then I'll just glue on my tools and I'm just gonna use my regular um, art glitter glue. I'm gonna kind of lay my tools out the way I want them and the way I'm doing them is basically a wooden one, a non-wooden one, a wooden one, a non-wooden one, so that they're kind of even in spacing as well but you know I mean they're all different shapes so you can't get them perfectly even but at least the um, the color scheme is even <laughs> I guess and you do want to be pretty generous with your glue because you're gluing down to a bumpy surface and notice that I am gluing them all down with the holes up as if they were hanging 
Now you could go a step further and you could actually like make little hooks and stuff, but nah, I don't, I don't need to go through all that. Okay, there's our wrench. I hang my tools, the ones that will. And then I have some things that I can like drop my hammer and screwdrivers into on my pegboard. All right, got my tools down. Now I'm just gonna glue this right basically on top of the tools. And that's that, that's that card basically finished. You know, I'm not gonna put gems or anything on it. So here's the two and you notice how this one's a little bit shinier because I did use the Sterling Foundry Wax, but I did like the darker shade uh, to make it look more like they were really, really old tools. Anyway, I hope you like this video. If you do, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment in the comment section below. And I'm going to leave uh, links so that you too can get this tool set uh, by Nancy McCabe for Spellbinders. It's called All the Tools. Thanks so much, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.